Morning, how is everybody today? So today, we're going to talk about your whole, how the whole is your whole life. And I mean the whole as in the whole person themselves, and your whole being. And we're going to look at some examples. It's going to be a stark reflection of some of us, me included. So it's a bit, you know, it's a bit, takes a bit of effort to get over it and see through it and understand it and understand yourself as a result of it. So let's go on this journey. I'm devastated without Jim, she says, his whole life. He is my whole life. Louise is, was one of the people whose husbands had just divorced her after five years of marriage. She wasn't kidding when she said that Jim was her whole life. For that's exactly what she had made him. Nothing or no one else had any real significance. This of, us, this of course explains why her devastation and her desperation and the sense of emptiness that she actually felt when he left. It also probably explains in part that the breakdown of the marriage. Dependency in a relationship creates some very unattractive qualities. Anger, jealousy, resentment, clinging, nagging, all very unpleasant to live with. These self-defeating qualities are the result of a deep saddening fear of losing that which we see as a basis of our entire identity. Morning, Alana. So, Bob, Bob, a public, public relations executive, chose to create his identity in his area of work. For him, it was only his career. Nothing else mattered. As with Lee's, the, the negative side effects accompanied his emotional dependency. At work, he was protective instead of expansive and giving. He often took the credit for everything, ignoring the contributions of those round about him that worked together. And in his constant attempt to gain approval from his superiors, he never took a chance. This, thus, he created his creativity was really greatly diminished. So when he lost his job because of a series of cutbacks, he, he predictability experienced a feeling of devastation and extreme sense of helplessness and thoughts of suicide, all brought on about the horrible feeling of his emptiness. His lifeline had been severed. Men and an increasing number of women who have lived their entire adult lives emotionally tied to their work, often fall apart when they're forced to retire. It is as though their lives are actually over. In fact, many die soon after. You know, the average lifespan of after retirement is 18 months. So I had somebody say I employed my father and I kept him working for the rest of his life. <laughs> and he did live a lot longer, about 20 or 30 years longer. How sad when you think about it that they cannot enjoy what is potentially the most enjoyable and creative parts of their lives. So Jean, a housewife, made her children the complete totality of her life. To those who didn't understand, she looked like and believed her, to herself to be a good mother. She was always there when her children came home from school and she catered for their every need. And she prided herself on the fact that her children always came first. If Jean had been a bit more honest with herself, she would have seen that she was using her children to create a reason to actually exist. This is hard for some people. It will be. Those who really knew her were aware of an, an inevitable side effect, a need to dominate overprotectiveness, self-righteousness, and the creation of massive amounts of guilt in her children. She never let them forget she was a giving person, how giving a person she was. When they grew up and eventually went off on their own, Jean faced what she perceived was total a total empty house, despite the fact that she had a husband that still lived there. This mirrored the total emptiness she felt in her life and even inside. Staying home with children is not inherently bad. Don't get me wrong. This is not what I'm saying. This is an example of what happens and how people can't move on 
when children leave the house. Morning, Deborah. They find it really difficult because it is that complete emptiness because their whole life has revolved around their children. However, when partners depend on children for their own, when parents depend on children for their own emotional support survival, it is clearly detrimental overall. Not only is it unhealthy for the parent, it is also unhealthy for the actual children. A parent's survival is a heavy burden for a child to bear. Think about that. A parent's survival is a heavy burden for a child to actually bear. The underlying feeling that Louise, Bob and Jean shared was an extreme sense of neediness. So when they lost the things in their lives to which they were emotionally tied, this needy was, was really exposed. Now I'll wager with most of you that at some time or another, we've all experienced that same kind of neediness. Yep, I'll put my hand up. If so, morning Francis, you'll agree it is one of the most painful feelings you can experience. And to, the, and to make matters worse, when you're in the throes of desperation, there seems to be little you can do to make yourself actually feel better. This raises the question then, is there anything that can be done to help loosen the grip of this intense neediness that can make us feel whole despite a great loss in our life? If there is, imagine how greatly our fear of loss could be diminished. The answer to the question is undeniably, yes, there is. That should come as a relief to most of us, myself included. Although you should be ecstatic that the relief is possible, it is, it is important to keep in mind that, as with everything else associated with change, it takes a great, a great deal of awareness, patience and perseverance to break strong emotionally backed patterns in your brain. This should not worry you, really. While, you may sound, while it may sound like an unpleasant task, it really isn't. If you take it in small and manageable steps and allow yourself time to really enjoy the process, it will help immensely. So I really invite you to try an alternative way of handling your life. It is geared towards helping you release that desperation and emptiness and fear that you may attach to certain aspects of your life. I actually know from my own experience that this release is actually possible. So I promise you that these steps will offer some in in interesting insights yet only through action and commitment can they become powerful tools that will absolutely change the quality of your life forever. And I'll see you tomorrow at 7.30. I'll actually see you at 9.30 if you're watching because we've got our Fife Property Show at 9.30 today, streaming across eight different channels, including YouTube. And that'll be exciting. Investment strategies, property update, and the Fife Property Market and Scottish update. Okay, I'll see you at seven, uh, either 9.30 or 7.30 tomorrow again. Bye for now.